so good morning good morning all and welcome to the lecture of oscillators in uh, il analog electronics so we were working on semester 4 um, say the first unit of semester 4 of rtm nagpur university in nagpur and let me introduce myself uh, myself as we all know that um, since i need to upload it yeah so myself dr nd meshram head and associate professor shri mathura das mota college of science and uh, today we are going to study about uh, the today we are going to study about the oscillators yes we have completed some portion of oscillators in the last class and today we are going to continue with that the same so let us begin with that yeah so oscillators we have studied and these are some of the concepts which we are expecting to complete in this section so basic principles of operation of an oscillator analyze the operation of rc and lc oscillators then operation of basic relaxation oscillators circuits right so that those are going to use uj to uni junction transistors so this was a little bit of intro introduction what is an oscillator an oscillator is an electronic circuit that generates a periodic wave form on its output without any external input source given to it right so it it is uh, it uses the dc supply to convert it into ac so we are having different wave forms which are coming out of the oscillator sine wave uh, triangular wave sort of wave and all so this is what we have already uh, completed so uh, yeah they are using communication systems and all so these are some of the applications actually oscillations these are this is a some basic definition oscillation and effect that repeatedly and regularly fluctuates about the mean wave that is called as an oscillation oscillator which uh, produces these oscillations are called as an oscillator and the characteristics of those oscillations or of those waves are it should have a form wave shape frequency amplitude so amplitude distortion and stability so then only the oscillator works properly so application of oscillators we have already discussed is all so this is what we have already completed over there and this is a ramp waveform which is generated by an oscillator yeah these are some of the signals which are which we expect from an oscillator to generate so this is a sine wave in the on the right hand side square wave and this is a sort of wave even there is one more that is a triangular wave so this these are the positive and and these are some of the oscillators which we are going to complete in this section bend bridge oscillator phase shift oscillator hartley oscillator colpitts crystal oscillator uni junction and relaxation oscillator so we are going to complete all those and then yeah so linear oscillators are having one amplifier and a feedback circuit right and the gain of both of them should be equal to 1 and that that is called as the barkhausen criteria that is what we have studied in the last class so we are having a amplifier which is having a gain of a we have a feedback circuit which is having a gain of beta so a v beta i mean we give it again back to this amplifier this a and beta should be equal to unity and that is actually the concept of the barkhausen criteria so a beta should be equal to zero uh, so uh, ab a beta that is the gain of the amplifier as well as the gain of the feedback circuit should be unity right so if it is there then only we will be having oscillations uh, at the output of this circuit and that is for, uh, called as the barkhausen criteria even as uh, as far as uh, say the phase angle is concerned so angle of a and angle of b that is phase angle of uh, amplifier as well as the phase angle of say the feedback circuit should be equal to 0 degrees or say 360 degrees as well. so this this is how the oscillation big so this amplifier is going to give you a phase shift of 180 degrees and similarly this uh, feedback circuit is going to provide you the uh, phase shift of another 180 degrees and total of that becomes say 0 uh, 0 degree or 360 degrees so 180 and uh, 360 and 0 degrees are at the same points so that is why we take it as 360 or 0 degrees are same so when we add this both phase is one by 180 degree phase shift from the amplifier and 180 phase shift from the uh, feedback circuit then it is equal to 0 at this point and the oscillation begins over here 
So this is how we are going to study. Now this is uh, only the block diagram of that uh, circuit. We'll be uh, studying the circuits as so. Yeah, this is the basic principle of oscillations. I guess the um, just theoretical part or the derivation part is not in your syllabus. So you will skip that. So these are all the portion of the uh, the uh, derivation or the proof, right? So this is how we can show that how Barkhausen criteria works. So A V beta A and beta is known as a loop gain, and that should be equal to one, right? Unity. So that is being uh, if 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 you have got a chance to do that practicals oscillators. Of uh, when bridge and phase shift oscillator, you might be knowing that uh, you might have understand, I guess, how to bring that gain equal to one, right? So that is the basic concept of the Barkhausen. Right? This is these are some of the uh, derivative portion of that. This is uh, imaginary portion J of the angle, and this is a condition. Yes, this is a condition which is known as the Barkhausen criteria that the gain of both. That is the gain of the amplifier as well as the gain of the feedback circuit should be equal to unity, right? And this is known as the Barkhausen criteria. The frequency of oscillation is solely determined by the phase characteristics of the feedback loop. The loop oscillates at the frequency for which the phase is zero. So the oscillation will start only when the phase angle is supposed to be zero or 360 degrees. Both are same. So zero or 360 degrees. So then only the oscillations will begin, and the oscillator will give you a frequency. Now, uh, what do you understand by a frequency or a wave? Say the voltage is going on changing with respect to time. So that is how we call it as the oscillations begin all. Day. So this is some of the some of more relations of Barkhausen criteria. Now these are some requirements of oscillations. That is, if x is zero, the only way x out can be non-zero. If for the denominator to be zero, Barkhausen criteria is true. So that is how a f by one minus a f beta f is equal into x. This whole term should be equal to one. Okay, so a b a beta is equal to one. So this is the Barkhausen criteria, and the phase angle of loop gain a f and beta f. Must be zero at the frequency of oscillation. The magnitude of loop gain must be unity, right? So the real part of a beta must be unity, and the imaginary part, that is the angle, that must be equal to zero, right? So now, how the how does the oscillation get started? So that is the main question. We have told you that how oscillations are there now. How they begin actually? So for that. We have some noise signals and the transients associated with the circuit. Turning on provide the initial source of signal that initiate the oscillation. So we have some noise in the output and that starts the oscillation. So we'll start from a very small noise and then it goes on increasing and then it will become steady at some other portions and it will become a stable and then only will have a sinusoidal wave like so. But initially, when it begins, it starts with a very small noise that we call it as an un unwanted signal, uh, uh, unwanted signal which is which is appearing at the output is called as a noise. So noise signals and the transients associated with the circuit turning on provide the turning circuit turning on means uh, as soon as you give the power supply to that particular circuit, then there is a noise or the transients which are associated with that circuit. And that actually provides the initial source signal. That is actually the signal uh, to that uh, to start the oscillations, right? To initiate those oscillations. So that is how the oscillation begins. Now, the practical design consideration. Usually, oscillators are designed so that the loop gain magnitude. That is, as I told you, a and beta, the gain of the amplifier as well as the gain of the feedback circuit, should be equal to unity, right? So uh, that that is how we start, but but actually oscillators are when we start practical oscillators so that the loop gain magnitude is slightly higher than unity at the, the desired frequency of oscillation. It should take should be kept at a slightly higher than one. Right, then only the oscillation will be. This is done because if we design for unity loop gain magnitude, a slight reduction in gain would result in oscillation that die to zero. So. 
थोड़ा सा ज्यादा करके रखेंगे तो ही वो इट विल रिमेन स्टेबल अदरवाइज इट विल गो ऑन डैम्पिंग डैम्पिंग एंड देन इट एट अ सर्टेन पोजीशन इट विल बिकम सी सो दिस इज बीइंग टोल्ड ओवर दैट द ड्रॉबैक इज दैट द ऑसिलेशन विल बी स्लाइटली डिस्टॉर्टेड द हायर गेन रिजल्ट्स इन ऑसिलेशन दैट ग्रोस अप टू द पॉइंट दैट विल बी क्लिप सो इफ यू इफ यू हैव दिस द ड्रॉबैक ऑफ दिस ऑसिलेशंस इज slightly distorted means at the top of that if you go on increasing the voltage it will have a clip deposition so it will not have a fine uh, ac signal like right but it will be clipped at the top or the bot bottom side right so that is how we call it them as a slightly distorted signals that is not pure signal so these are some of the basic principles of oscillation the feedback oscillator is widely used for generation of sine wave signals sine wave means sinusoidal waves so ac wave we call that the positive in phase feedback arrangement maintains the oscillation and the feedback gain must be kept to unity to keep the output for from distorting so we have to keep it to unity slightly higher than or unity so that will not get a distorted signal but will give get a pure pure ac wave, right so these are some of the basic principles now this is how we are expected to uh, when we talk in terms of say the phase angle so this is how it begins so when i say i put a dc source or when i apply a voltage to this amplifier it is going to give you a phase shift of 180 degrees so whatever you are going to give over here it will give you a phase shift of 180 now as you are able to see this has been feed back to this feedback circuit so i'll be having the same wave coming out over here so when it is given to this circuit now it again changes back to 180 degree phase shift so now again we are having a 180 degree phase shift now if you are able to see over here the amplitude is slightly deteriorating at this output of the feedback circuit right so it is uh, slightly lesser than what we are trying to give it in the input of this feedback circuit so this is the input side of the feedback circuit this is the output side of that the amplifier so whatever the uh, input is there to this amplifier is going to be amplified whereas the amplified output if you give to a feedback circuit it is a slightly lower because we, this is not an amplifier this is actually a feedback feedback circuit so it's slightly lower but yes there is a change in the phase angle that is there is a change in phase uh, of 180 degrees right so as soon as we are having this change phase change we sub we put it to this put it back to the circuit and we we'll again get back the original signal right so this is how uh, uh the oscillator circuit works so this is actually the operational amplifier circuit and if you connect it to a, a inverting terminal uh, of that then you'll be having a inverted output of the, it will give you a 180 degree phase shift right so if, if this is how they are they are shown over there that it, since we have connected it to a non inverting amplifier here the phase the angle remains the same so just we are having a amplified out of it right so this is how the oscillation starts now design criteria for oscillation we have already studied barkhausen criteria that the magnitude of loop gain must be unity or slightly larger slightly larger not more than that otherwise it will done so we'll have this gain the magnitude of a beta that is a is the amplifier uh, uh, say a is the gain of the amplifier and b is the gain of that feedback circuit and a beta should be equal to 1 and similarly the total phase shift that is phi of loop gain must be 360 degrees Uh, n into 360 degree where n is equal to 0 1 2 3 so these are the waves which are going to come appear after uh, having this so uh, 360 degrees or 0 degrees so total phase shift should be yeah so we are having some of the rc oscillators we, which we are expecting to, uh, to study in this section so rc feedback oscillators are generally having a limited frequency range of 1 megahertz or less so we we can't design a uh, Uh, rc circuit rc means where we are employing resistor and capacitor both in a circuit right so that particular circuits are called as rc circuits and in which we are going to uh, say uh, connect inductors so we'll have lc circuits inductor and capacitor circuits 
here we are going to use simple circuits which we are calling as resistance and capacitor circuit but they are, ha are having a drawback that we can't generate a frequency more than one megahertz but it's going to be less than one megahertz right so the, the types of rc oscillators that we will discuss uh, over here in this section are wind bridge oscillator and phase shift oscillator i'm i'm, I'm feeling very uh, say very uh, say very sad for this that uh, you are not able to design those circuits on your own because in in the practicals we expect from your side that you design these wind bridge and phase shift oscillators on your own design your own circuits uh, get your calculations done and then implement those circuits on breadboard and uh, view the waveforms on CROs. So these are these are very uh, say uh, very challenging as well as very interesting to perform those practicals. So with these all those things. So this is the wind bridge and phase shift oscillators which we are expecting to cover in this section. And those oscillators are yes obviously called as the RC oscillators. So let us start with this first the wind bridge oscillator now as you, as the name suggests there is a bridge of RC network right so we are having uh, two circuits one is called as the amplifier and the other one is called as the bridge circuit so uh, wind bridge oscillator it is a low frequency oscillator which ranges from a few kilohertz to one megahertz so we can have uh, this uh, oscillator designed for say less than one megahertz right so yeah so this is the amplifier that we are having and uh, this is connected to the non-inverting terminal of the amplifier this is r1 and r2 these are the feedback and input resistances and the output is going to feed back to this circuit now if you are able to see we are having this circuit rc and this is uh, rc in series and this is rc in parallel so we are using both the value of resistances are and this R remains same, the C and C remains the same, and we'll be having oscillations on that. So this is a very simple circuit to design on breadboard, right? So I guess you have understood. So this whole portion, this works as a amplifier, and this circuit works as the feedback circuit, right? So VO is the output at this amplifier, and VI is the output at the feedback circuit. And we are going to feed back it to the non-inverting terminal right so uh, this inverting terminal is going to give you some input output and this is going to be given to the another so both will give you this will give you a 180 degree phase shift and this is going to give you this circuit rc network which is connected in the form of a bridge so if you are able to see this is a sort of a bridge there is there was actually one more circuit in which it, it actually looks like a bridge right so these are some four points one two three these four points are there and they are being connected over there so it appears as a bridge so that is how we call them as a wind bridge oscillator right so this is resistance r1 and r2 they, they are different and but they are required to calculate the gain of this amplifier and this rc network is actually going to decide the frequency of that so uh, we have this as like this so this is how the circuit looks like right so this rc is in series and this rc is in parallel and this whole dotted portion is called as the feedback network whereas this is an this is called as the ideal voltage amplifier which, uh, which is having a gain of av and this this feedback circuit is going to give you the gain of beta right so av beta should be equal to one that is actually the bark house and uh yeah so this is how the signal goes uh, over there so this is vo this is vi to this amplifier oh yeah so this is vi which is going to give the input from the feedback and this is the feedback uh, output of the amplifier which is uh, given to this feedback circuit so yes this is some of the derivative derivation portion of uh wind bridge oscillator i guess this is not in your syllabus but just for reference this is how it has been calculated the value of rc and the value of uh, how this is going to work so this is the formula which we are expected to uh, use when we actually design so this is that gain the 
formula for gain is it is not visible over there properly so i will try to ensure that it should be visible uh yeah so this is actually how we are going to calculate the gain of that uh, circuit uh yeah so this is how we are going to calculate the gain and this is r2 by r1 should be equal to 2 3 minus 1 that is 2 and the value of r2 and r1 are chosen like that so that the ratio will give you the value of 2 so to ensure oscillations the ratio of r2 and r1 must be slightly greater than 2 so we have we use one pot over there and we adjust accordingly because we don't have the exact value of that resistances so we use pot on that case and we try to uh say uh, we try to adjust that pot accordingly so that we will get this ratio r2 by r1 equal to 2 right so this is that and then that is called as the k constant over there this is the ratio r2 by r1 equal to 2 then k should be equal to 1 plus r2 by r1 that is equal to 2 and k equal to 3 ensures the loop gain of unity right so we are having a unity gain of that so if we are having k is greater than 3 then it is growing oscillations if it is less than 3 then it is having a damping operation or dec decreasing oscillations so it will go on decreasing after a certain duration of time yeah so uh, yes r2 by r1 is equal should be equal to 2 or we can say that r2 must be equal to twice of r1 and there is one more formula for say the calculation of frequency so omega c should be equal to 1 by rc and if if you are able to see this is the amplifier gain so uh, av equal to 3 which means that r2 should be greater than or equal to twice of r1 and omega c that is actually the imaginary or the frequency portion of that so omega c must be equal to 1 by rc right so 1 by rc will give you uh, omega c and for frequency will have 2 pi f so omega uh, say f will be equal to 1 by 2 pi rc so that is the calculation of frequency so omega will give you 2 pi by f so if you put over there so frequency f will be equal to 1 by 2 pi into rc and that is going to give you yes Uh, these types of oscillations now if you are able to see when it starts it becomes uh, this is actually the graph of that when this oscillator when we uh, give a power supply to the circuit so it will start in this fashion so it will have a damped small damped uh, say uh, noise over there and then it goes on stably increasing over it and after a certain time it goes on stable But as you are able to, so this is how I was telling you that <coughs> this signal is being <coughs> sorry clipped on both the portion because we have increased the voltage. So for that we have to adjust that pot accordingly so that it remains uh, the same. So this is a a very nice wave over here at this place. But here, if you are able to see, this is clipped, right? So this is also clipped, and at this point, this is also. Clipped. so as you go on increasing this starts so to have a uh, to have this in proper range we should uh, sorry we should uh, keep it sorry so we we should keep it uh, at lower voltage than 50 now why why it is clipped over 50 because the power supply which is being used for the uh, amplifier op amp operational amplifier it, it should be uh say up to plus 12 minus 12 or say plus minus 15 right so the, its capacity to have voltage between 15 plus 5 plus 15 to minus 15 only but if you have an oscillation which are increasing more than that then what happens it will show you the voltage up to 15 which implies that the peaks of these oscillations are being clipped over there right so as soon as they are being clipped so we'll will have these types of uh, waveforms we will not have a pure sinusoidal wave but we'll have a distortion over there and this is called as a distortion so these are actually the stable waves but they are being clipped at these points now this type of waves are being actually uh, we are able to observe those on say the cros right so this is the wind bridge oscillator this is uh, the 
the derivative portion of that and this is how we are going to calculate the frequency of that so av beta omega c is over there and this is the frequency for fr oh sorry this is the frequency for phase shift oscillator and uh, we are having this frequency uh, omega equal to 1 by rc which means 2 pi f that is omega is equal to 2 pi f if we put over here so we'll have f equal to 1 by 2 pi rc right so uh, now this is the derivation por portion of it and this is how the actual wind bridge oscillator circuit works i guess you have uh, understood the circuit so this is the actual circuit which is going to provide you with the oscillations right let us begin with this this is another circuit which we call it as a phase shift oscillator again we are going to have uh, rc networks used for uh, to have the 180 degree phase shift right but uh, in this case we are having uh, rc circuits to provide the 180 degree phase shift so one rc circuit provides a phase shift of 60 degrees so we are going to use three rc circuits which in uh, say which give which will give you 60 plus 60 plus 60 180 degree phase shift the gain of this uh, amplifier must be less than 29 so and this is the formula for the frequency fr equal to 1 by 2 pi under root of 6 rc there it was 1 by 2 pi rc the formula for frequency was 1 by 2 pi rc it is being derived over there and the derivation portion is not in our syllabus so yeah this frequency and yes this is actually the circuit of the phase shift oscillator but yeah we are not going to use these three amplifiers for that uh we're going to use the feedback circuits yeah again this is a derivation portion of it so we are we have not concerned yes this is the circuit that we are expecting to have like this yeah so yes this is a circuit which we are expecting so this is actually our, our uh, this is an amplifier which we are having which is given to an inverting terminal and this is the feedback given to back to this rc network now if you are able to see we are having these three sets of rc networks this c and this is rc and r this c and there is one more r over there so all of them are going to provide you uh, 60 degree phase shift each right so three will give you three will provide you with 180 degree phase shift. I guess there is one uh, R is missing over here. It should have one R over here, and this is the input resistance that is R1 and R2, which is going to determine the gain of this amplifier. And that gain, uh, in this case, in phase shift oscillator, which we are expecting it to be, say, 29, right? So 29 is the gain, and this is the frequency, oscillating frequency, that is 1 by 2 pi under root of 6 RC, which is actually being derived by this derivation. And this is the formula for R2 by R1, that is 29, which actually gives you the gain. And the gain must be at least 29 to maintain the oscillation. Uh, yeah, then we are having the LC oscillators, but I guess uh, it is enough for today. And if you have any queries, uh, we can uh, sum up those by, uh, say, we can sum up those by, your questions so if you have any questions you can ask me i will just stop sharing my screen yeah so is, are there any questions so thank you thank you very much for joining this class and uh, yeah i will be uploading this video on youtube and i expect from your side side that you should you go on my youtube channel view my videos uh, like subscribe and share those videos with your friends and colleagues thank you thank you very much I will be coming back again with more videos on YouTube. Have a nice time. Stay, stay home, stay safe, take care. Good day. See you soon. Bye.